Do do di. It's Nandi. Hello, friends. The patch notes have just been announced, and there's some pretty awesome stuff to discuss. I'd always recommend reading the notes for yourself, but in today's video, I'll hit on the major talking points and how they impact you and your Tacticus career. I'll also spend a bit of time talking about the mech team, because this patch is very significant for the team, but it might not be immediately obvious. Tacticus turns two, and there will be a two week celebration of that anniversary. I don't know what the goodies are this year, but last year's anniversary event was pretty generous and gave players, both paying and free, lots of attractive offers and resources for the game. It looks like Sho will be the character on offer this year, and Revas was the anniversary character last year. So the love and appreciation of the Tao pleases me immensely. The big one. The Blood Angels have been confirmed as the newest faction to come to Tacticus. In this patch, we are getting the first two characters of the faction. The first will be Mataneo, who is a jump pack intercessor sergeant, unlocking via two-week hero release event that starts on August 4th. The second is Mephiston, a character that needs no introduction. He comes to the game as the Blood Angels Legendary on August 25th. I'll cover both with showcases closer to the time, so stay tuned. We don't have any official further information about what other characters might belong to the faction, but Ernst, Tacticus ambassador and friend, spotted this crucial detail in the background of the new home screen. It looks like behind the right hand of Mephiston, there is a unit that looks like a Death Company intercessor. We know that Snowprint works closely with Games Workshop in terms of getting their art and assets approved, so I wonder if this is some foreshadowing to a future character. We've also discovered the name of the next machine of war, Galatian, the Redemptor Dreadnought. This will be the fourth machine of war that comes to Tacticus to complement the existing trio and will be unlockable via a week-long incursion event on August 16th. Redemptor Dreadnoughts are massive war machines that are devastating at both melee and range. I've been lucky enough to test this Dreadnought and it's super cool in terms of gameplay and mechanics. It's definitely the one I'm going to be picking for the next incursion. The other nice thing is that you'll now also be able to raid previously completed incursion missions, much like how you can raid completed campaigns, which should hopefully cut down on screen time for this game mode. The game will also have its usual two quests over the five week live ops cycle. We'll get Barakiel first on August 7th. On August 28th, Imaspec gets a quest event using the Necrons and Adeptus Mechanicus as allies. Stay tuned to the channel as I'll be releasing quest guides for these videos to help you complete them. There are two tournament arenas in this live ops. The first starts on July 31st. It runs over three days as a draft power-up format. The second starts on August 15th and runs over seven days. This is the infested power-up format, where waves of Tyranids also spawn to make the battle more complex for both sides. This second tournament arena increases the rarity cap to epic, which is the first time we'll be able to play tournament arena with an epic cap. That means you'll want characters at gold one and abilities at level 35 for this event. There have been some pretty massive changes to Arena as well. Now, the token regeneration time goes from 83 minutes to 144 minutes. This means that you'll now generate 10 tickets per day, down from 17 and a half, which is a big improvement in terms of time spent on the game mode that can be sometimes quite repetitive. The main concern that some of you might have is that arena battles are a place to earn extra experience. I've been told by the developers that the arena chest rewards will change in order for players not to be left at a disadvantage. Some of the rewards like raid tickets and coins will be replaced with guaranteed experience books and anyone who uses all of their tickets will come out ahead compared to the previous rewards model. There have also been some more changes to Guild War this patch. Guild leaders can now mark a zone as a target priority during war, which lets the rest of the guild know what the target to attack is. There is also an auto enlist feature, which lets players automatically enlist for subsequent wars in a war season, provided they have used at least 5 attack tokens during war. You will continue to auto enlist as long as you continue to spend at least 5 tickets in war, which is a nice quality of life change. 
Finally, we get some building changes. Troop garrisons are gone now and they have been replaced by landing pads. These buildings continue the summons theme. On turn 3, the defending team summons two jump pack intercessors to help the defenders out. This building provides a regional buff, so to adjacent buildings, rather than the global buff that the troop garrisons provided. There has also been a change to the Vox station. It now provides something called Valkyrie Strike, which marks a hex on the battlefield on the first, third, and fifth turns and calls down Hellstrike missiles after a turn's delay. This is a global buff and therefore affects all buildings on the defensive team until the Vox station is taken down. There have been big changes to two different guild bosses. The Avatar of Kane has had his overall health reduced, making the boss easier to work through and consume less raid tickets. Additionally, the Eldari defenders can no longer critical hit with their Plasma Grenade active ability and no longer gain attacker bonuses and modifiers. I think this makes the fight overall much easier, as you now mainly just have to contend with the Avatar itself and its abilities. Mortarion has also been reworked. Now killing the side bosses only reduces Mortarion's armor by 70% instead of 90%. Mortarion's Plague Wind ability also does double damage now to summons. On the surface of it, these are direct buffs to Mortarion, who is already one of the hardest bosses in the game. Why then am I so cheerful about it, and why do I think it's good for Tacticus and the game's health? Well, the answer lies with the mechanical team. Not too long after Exeter Row was released, we saw him and his Admech brethren dominate the guild raid meta. It was pretty obvious even from early on that the Admechs would be good against Screamer Killer, but the team has gone on to dominate against basically everything apart from Rogaldorn and Gazgul. And I should specify here, when I say the Admechs were great, I mean they were great. They were outperforming the other raid teams by a massive margin, and in some cases more than doubling other raid teams' damage output. The tipping point came when people figured out that you could even use the Admechs against Mortarion, the supposed anti-melee boss. The mech team came out on top, again by a significant margin, even at Legendary 5 difficulty. To be honest, it was beginning to look a little bit unhealthy, and my worry was over Snowprint wielding the nerf bat. There is no worse feeling than building towards something for months and months, only to have it snatched away from you, and it would have had terrible consequences for the player base. People hate seeing their investments devalued, so what was Snowprint to do? Well, they buffed Mortarion. Effectively, they've given him more armor so that Mortarion takes less damage from Exeter Row's passive attacks. Additionally, the change to Plaguewind should make it harder for you to build up an army of mechanical summons, which the team relies on to succeed. Is it the end of the world? No. The mech team is still best in slot for 5 bosses, and by a significant margin. If you've invested in them, your investment remains largely intact. Will this be the only change or effective nerf that Snowprint employ against the mechanical team? Only time will tell, and none of us have direct insight into the developer's plans. Clearly, Snowprint recognized the problem, and they also recognize that the fix is not best achieved by nerfing the character and team directly. For me, that's massively reassuring. I suspect now that Snowprint recognizes this problem posed by the mech team, they will design future bosses to be more resistant to the team. Oh yeah, back to Mortarion. He is stronger now, and he's more of an anti-summoner. The increase in his armor value is annoying. Unless you're running a team or character that doesn't care about armor and does 100% pierce damage. Maybe such a team already exists and sees its value go up in light of these changes to Mortarion. There are a couple of other things in there, smaller print per se, but still important. I just wanted to cover the highlights for the patch notes. As usual, I'd recommend checking out the full patch notes on the official Tacticus Discord, linked in the video description below. Overall thoughts, I'm pretty happy with the patch. We get a new faction, and it's a popular one in the Blood Angels. Not only do we get two characters from the faction, but we also get an awesome new Machine of War. I've been part of the initial testing team for that, and the Dreadnought is easily the coolest Machine of War of the group so far, and I can't wait to show it off to you in a few weeks. It's not just the new units though, there's been a lot of quality of life change and improvements, and I'm personally a massive fan of these arena changes. Going from 17 to 10 tickets per day almost halves the amount of time spent on the mode, but you maintain the rewards. 
I'm a big believer in having quality screen time rather than quantity screen time, and this seems like a great move in the right direction. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to support me in the work that I do, I'd love it if you could consider entering my referral code on screen. It earns you 100 Blackstone and supports me in the work that I do. It is single use though, so choose who you support carefully. Bye for now. Doo -doo -dee. It's Nandi!